Hey everyone, I am your astrologer Wonder Girl, helping you to live in tune with the natural cycles of the moon. This is your astrology horoscope for the full moon in Aquarius, which occurs on Thursday, August 11th, 2022 at 9.35 p.m. Eastern Time and 6.35 p.m. Pacific Time. Now, what I think is going on at this full moon in Aquarius is that we are really stressed, I think, about some things in our life that we either have already initiated to improve it or want to initiate very soon to improve it here, which is is making us a bit upset and anxious and it's about us really detaching from these negative emotions from these negative things here and just surrendering to the process and really to the divine to give us some insights about how best to proceed here and once we do that and making everything easier now for us to get things going and moving from here on out so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video if you want to hear more about that please do stay tuned because I'm going to hop into it right now uh, in order to get started though what I like to do first is just place it on the chart so that you can see what it is that I'm going to be referring to in this video and follow along with me. So let me do that now. This video is for the full moon in Aquarius. Because of that, I've adjusted the chart accordingly. Um, I know this chart is for the full moon because we've got the moon here and Aquarius make an exact opposition over here to the sun in Leo. And when the moon opposes the sun like such, that is a full moon here. Uh, now, what are full moons about? Full moons are all about stepping into things that we've been working towards for quite some time here or bringing them to completion, especially because that is when the moon is the furthest here from the sun. Okay, and not only are full moons about stepping into something we've been working towards for quite some time or bringing them to completion here, but um, they're also about illumination and insight, getting answers perhaps, or seeing things that we didn't see before, especially too, because that is when the moon is the brightest in the sky. And other things as well that I should note is that full moons can also be about choices because full moons are a function of an opposition, two opposite things. It's hard to do two opposite things at once, right? And oppositions equal choices a lot of times uh, here that are also important. Okay, now what are we stepping into, completing, getting insight in, or maybe making some choices? is about or choices to do. Well, that now is going to be Aquarius because that is the sign, of course, that the full moon is in. What is Aquarius all about? Well, one of the things Aquarius is about is really about detaching, detaching from especially the emotions with Aquarius being um, an air sign here. So one of the things that I think at this full moon in Aquarius, we are really trying to step into here or get illumination on how to do or make a choice about is to detach from the emotions, especially the negative emotions from our situation here. Not only that, but Aquarius too is also about socializing, socializing out and about with people or just doing things that feel a little bit, just a little bit more, more easier, I don't know, more relaxing uh, here as well, because Aquarius is the sign of friendships, I should note, and because a lot of times in order to detach from your situations, you kind of need to do something else to shake yourself up. So not only is this full moon in Aquarius about us really stepping into a more detached, you know, posture within our situations and getting insight on how to do that, but I think it's also us maybe doing other things, other random just stuff to socialize, to be out and about in order to get our minds in a different way. Okay, not only that, but I should also note as well that um, Aquarius too is a lot about unique perspectives, perspectives or seeing the bigger picture because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which has a weird orbit, right? It turns on its side um, here. Not only that, but I do consider Aquarius's unique perspectives to be very high minded or very connected to the divine here and to a higher power, especially being ruled by the outer planet an outer planet like Uranus, which tends to be that way. So what that means to me is that not only at this full moon in Aquarius here, are we really trying to step into a more detached posture when it comes to our situations here by, say, socializing or just doing other stuff, you know, that are unimportant to get us in a relaxed state. But from detaching and getting in that relaxed state, I think we're also trying to, to get a unique perspective on our situations and whatever we're doing that's more in touch with the divine um, here and maybe with our intuition, which I think is very close to the divine connected to that as we move forward. Okay, not only that, but I also do believe um, that um, be that um, in addition to Aquarius being about that, I do believe that it's very solutions oriented because when you take a step back to see the bigger picture that is more in touch with the divine, usually it brings perspective solutions here on how to maneuver these things forward. So not only at this full moon in Aquarius, right, are we really trying to detach 
from our emotions here by relaxing, socializing, doing something else so that we can get a better perspective on our situation that's more in touch with our intuition, with the divine and with a higher power. But I think that we're also trying to get solutions from the divine here about our situations and how to maneuver them in a better way forward that um, Nita, I say, is more surrendered, right? Surrendered to the divine here and to the divine's timing on things. In addition to that, maybe one last note that I'll say is that Aquarius is also about letting go of the ego, letting go of the the ego, letting go of pride, being the opposite sign of Leo, which is typically correlated to ego and pride here. So not only is this full moon about us really trying to detach from the negative emotions of our situation by doing other stuff <laughs> that's less important and that's just fun so that we can get a better perspective on our situation that's more in touch with our intuition and the divine and more surrendered to the divine and get some solutions now on how to fix it. But I think we're also trying to release any <clears throat> ego or pride that might be in the way of us doing all of those things, of detaching here, of getting in touch with the divine, of getting a different perspective, and of coming up with the solutions that we might need to our situations from here on out, okay? <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and that's it, I think, that I want to say for now about the major themes here of this full moon in Aquarius. Before I move forward in time, though, to tell you more specifically now how this full moon is going to play out. You know me, I do like to go backwards in time just for a bit. And I like to go backwards in time just to catch you up here on um, why this is now coming up, this full moon in, in Aquarius and these themes to be felt, lived through and experienced. Um, so I'm going to do that. I think to go backwards in time, I'm going to start at another point that I have been lately. And I'm just going to start very briefly, really quickly back at, um, at, what was it? January to April of 2020 and January to April of 2020, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter came conjunct here in Capricorn, which is like a very rare event that maybe occurs like every 35 to 36 years. What was that about? Um, that was about, um, us really realizing that something was not right in our life and needed to change um, with a whole bunch of things, relationships, money, jobs, wasn't authentic to us, wasn't in touch with our true heart, and that we needed to initiate sweeping change in our life in order to fix that and overcome these uh, negative relationships, habits, jobs, situations that weren't where we need them to be. Okay, I should note that I do believe that now as of this year, April, also April of 2022 at the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus that we had a few months ago, that that finally became a reality. That in April of 2022, two years after that initial alignment, that finally became a reality where we had overcome these negative situations from our past that had persisted for many decades prior and stepped into better ones that were more fertile Taurus, right? More fertile, more abundant here and more conducive to our success from here on out, which was very, very wonderful, okay? Because finally in April of this year at the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, we finally were in a new and better chapter in life that we'd been working towards. We then tried to do more things, more things now, right? With this new and better chapter in life since it had arrived to improve it, you know, and to add on top of it and to take it to the next level here, which I think was done with really pure intentions. But even though it was done with pure intentions, I think two weeks after that, um, at the next full moon, which was a lunar eclipse in Scorpio in May of this year, 2022, we ran into difficulty taking this new and better experience of life to the next level here in whatever way, um, which I think was very, very frustrating to us, especially after all we'd been through about why it was hard for us to move these things forward here. And because it was really frustrating, and I think we were a bit upset, the divine, because Scorpio is very connected as well to the divine and to our intuition, started to step in. And it started to give us some answers here about why we were struggling to move forward in something that was supposed to be new and better for us. And I think what the divine told us at that lunar eclipse in Scorpio in May of 2022 is that the reason why we were struggling now to move some new and better experience of life forward is because we were still trying to do these new things by the old way of life that we were trying to escape since 2022 and by even the way we were doing 2020 to 2022. And Spirit was trying to tell us here that this new life that we were uh, stepping into needs now new behaviors, new behaviors, new actions, and a new sense of self. Um, and it needs new behaviors and new actions that are slow, stable, secure, self-reliant here and not crazy, chaotic, massive change all over the place where we're getting too intertwined in other people and spending and losing insane amounts of money. 
Okay. And I think that that was a very good insight for us to get from spirit. Obviously, whenever spirit speaks, it's good um, at that time. But even though it was a good uh, insight for us to get at that time, I think it was a little bit hard for us to adapt to until the next new moon, two weeks after that, which I believe was also May, the end of May here, 2022. And it was that new moon in Gemini. And Gemini is very adaptable, right? So at that next new moon, two weeks after that, in May of 2022, we finally started to get what spirit was saying that we now needed to to go about life in a slow, stable, secure, self-reliant way that was more like composed than what we had been going through in order to move forward, which was very, very good. But even though we started to get that in May of 2022, I think there were still some things within our physical reality that were not conducive to a slow, stable, secure lifestyle and to moving these things forward. And we're maybe still like the remnants of 2020 and what had gone on there that was was really hard and was frustrating us that we realized we now needed to fix. We needed to fix the things that were stopping us from being slow, stable, secure, and self-reliant. And I believe we did that. And because of that, at two weeks later at the next full moon, which was in Sagittarius in June of 2022, we then felt much better. We then felt like we had finally fixed things that were preventing us from proceeding with new things in the new way that it is that we needed here, which was very, very, very nice, okay? Because of that, we then got to the next new moon, which was two weeks after that, July 2022, right here. Was it June? No, sorry. I think it was June still. Um, June 2022 here um, in Cancer. And I think at that new moon in Cancer, we then felt... Um, much better now, much better now. And finally, more able to start again with what we wanted to do in April 2022 to start again here now moving our new better chapter of life to the next level in some kind of ways, feeling like we have a more solid foundation. But even though we felt finally ready at the new moon in Cancer in June to like move forward once again, we ran into another roadblock here that came up at the next full moon two weeks after that in Capricorn here, which was just July, I believe it was July of 2022. Okay. Um, and what roadblock we ran into was really personal fears and insecurities. We ran into another roadblock moving forward, building things in our life because um, we still were afraid or insecure about going about life in a slow, stable, secure, and self-reliant way and saving money and not being so entwined with other people and about what that would mean and about how that would all play out. That was really sabotaging some of our efforts here. Um, and because of that, we, we realized we had to fix fix that, fix those things. And because um, and we did fix those. And because we fixed those, we then got to the last new moon, which occurred two weeks ago here in Leo. I, I think it was also July 2022, where we finally feel now ready to start again, for realsies, for realsies, ready to start again here to do what we wanted to do in April of 2022, but that were a lot of just things in the way here preventing that from happening because Leo, right, is very bold, can be very action oriented. And I believe we did actually two weeks ago um, either begin to do um, more things in our life or intend to have an intention to do more things in our life with relationships and money in order to improve it and take it to the next level. And I think that we either started to do things or intended to do things. And in the past two weeks, it like hasn't really gone the best. I think we've still had some fears and insecurities that were either sabotaging our situations or preventing us from doing them. Or we've had just some sudden unexpected events kind of throw wrenches in our plans here that also was unpleasant. And because we're now finally doing something we've really wanted to do since April, but it, and, and we are kind of doing it, but it's still kind of running into some weird things that are happening. Um, we now get to this full moon in Aquarius here, August. We're now at this full moon having to really detach, detach not from what we're doing. I think we do need to finally do what we wanted to do in April. So not detach and let go of what we're doing, but detach from the negative events and the negative emotions surrounding like what has or has not happened in our situations and with our abilities here to move it forward here and just do other things that are less stressful so that we can 
um, connect more with the divine about our situations and surrender to the divine and divine timing here. Um, let go of ego and pride surrounding all of this. Your comedy arguments or difficulties, if there were any, and get some insights and solutions from the divine that we need in order to continue again, start again, continue again, or get these actions back on track in the ways that we need to move onwards. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Because that was a lot. I'm, I'm sorry that was so long. Um, because, but it was. So that's what we're dealing with. Because of that, I'm now just going to repeat that one more time uh, here very simply uh, so that you can get a better sense of what is going on here. So let me do that now. We have recently initiated more actions that we've really been trying to do since April of this year with relationships, money, et cetera, et cetera, home, family, health, in a slow, stable, secure, and self-reliant way. However, it's still run into issues. I think we've still had some fears and anxieties causing us to either play small or act out in weird ways, overdoing things here, or even some sudden and unexpected negative events have come up and gotten in the way. And because of that, we now at this full moon need to just detach. Um, not from what we want to do, but from the negativity surrounding it and the negative events so that we can, and we need to let go of ego and pride um, and do other stuff uh, that's less stressful so that we can get a better perspective on the situation, connect more with the divine, get some solutions as well about how to fix these things in a better way and get them back on track. Okay. And that's it. <clears throat> because that's it, I'm now going to... Um, Zoom in, I guess, a little bit closer to this full moon in Aquarius so that you can see a bit more specifically here um, what is going on at this full moon and how it's going to play out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and to do that here, I'm going to um, start with, I think, a few aspects in particular that the full moon itself is making. Okay, so let's do that. Let's draw the full moon on the chart. Here's the moon in Aquarius opposite the sun in Leo. Okay, and one of the significant aspects that's going on here is that this full moon is conjunct Saturn, the most obvious one as you see it here. Now, this is a little bit of a challenge. Why is this a challenge? Because Saturn's an involved here, and Saturn does tend to be a little bit difficult, especially by conjunction and opposition here, because it's opposing the sun. Um, what is the difficulty? Well, Saturn tends to block or restrict things or just make things like hard and difficult to do. Um, what is being blocked? What is being restricted? What is hard to do? Well, remember, this full moon in Aquarius is really all about us detaching from any negativity surrounding our situations here, um, relaxing and surrendering to the divine to get a bigger, better perspective on our situations and solutions. So what this indicates to me is that that is difficult, that at this full moon in Aquarius, we do have an intention to relax, to let go, to detach, to get in touch with the divine, to surrender from the hardships. But it's very, very hard for us to detach. It's very hard for us to let go. It's very hard for us to loosen up a bit here with our lives and with where everything is. Okay. Not only is that one of the reasons why I think it's really difficult for us to do that, but I also need to note the next alignment that I want to uh, mention. The next alignment is that this full moon in Aquarius here is not only um, conjunct Saturn, but it's also making a square over here to uh, these three planets, almost the North Node, Uranus, and Mars here in Taurus. Okay, and this can also be difficult in a few ways. I think what I want to emphasize first, though, is going to be the Uranus and Mars here. This is really frustrating because this is a square, okay, and squares are typically difficult. And because this is a square to both Uranus and Mars, which don't like to be in Taurus, of all the planets that could be in Taurus, Uranus and Mars like Taurus the least. So this is a bit of a challenge here. Uh, that's going on. Okay. And what way is this a challenge? Well, Mars tends to kind of agitate things here and really, you know, make us frustrated. And Uranus can also bring anxiety, anxiety, restlessness, nervousness. Not only that, but I am getting a sense that a lot of the anxiety, restlessness, nervousness, frustration, agitation here, I think is still a lot of fear and insecurity here around our situations, a slow, stable, and secure lifestyle, and whether or not they're really going to move forward and complete and end up in a way that we can feel happy with. So what that means to me, I guess, to continue bringing the interpretation together so far is that this full moon in Aquarius, we're really trying to just 
detach from any negativity in our situations and get a different perspective on the matter that's more surrendered and in touch with the divine and the divine's timing and whatever the divine wants in order to fix these things. But it's really hard for us to do. It's really hard for us to detach and get in touch with the divine and surrender here because I think we're still very frustrated, anxious, and nervous about our situations here and about what we're doing or hope to do and about whether or not it's actually going to happen and come together in the way that we might like, especially if they didn't go too well over the course of the past week, week in particular, since the, the full moon and uh, sorry, the first quarter moon in Scorpio uh, before this. Okay, that could be quite hard. And I think it's difficult for us to really detach and surrender here. And I think we're so anxious and nervous because there's just a lot of fear, a lot of fear going on here. Yeah, with what's about uh, to happen, that is a challenge that's going on. Okay, and because that's difficult, and I think that's most of what I want to mention in regards to this full moon, I'm now going to give you some advice here. What is the advice? Well, both Saturn and the square to the nodes, to me, do indicate um, conscious choice. Conscious choice is what is needed here um, in order to maneuver these things forward. Um, and get things kind of back on track. What is the conscious choice that's needed here? Well, the conscious choice that's needed here, I think in this instance is to choose, to choose whether we like it or not, whether it feels easy or not, whether it's comfortable or not, whether it's gonna make us happy or not, is to consciously choose to just let go, to just let go and to detach from our situations and whatever has or has not happened for better or for worse here and from our anxiety about these situations and to surrender to surrender to, again, the divine and however we need to get in touch with the divine and to the process and, of course, to choose to let go of any ego and pride, especially if some of you are in arguments, okay, um, here as we move forward, okay. And if you can do that, I should note, I, I, I do believe, I, I think conscious choice is necessary. It's going to need to happen. But if you can do that, because, hold on, hold on. Let me sorry, sorry, let me zoom back on that. Conscious choice. You gotta choose consciously. I should also note, I think it's highly necessary because when you get a square to the nodes, like this happens, what tends to occur is that the planet squaring the nodes gets skipped. It's called a skip step. We don't do it enough as much as we need to do it. We do it a little bit and not a lot. So we need to consciously choose here to surrender and detach and get in touch with the divine way more than what feels natural or comfortable. That's like the huge key. I just needed to impress the importance here on you. you. Can't don't skip this. Don't do it just a little bit. You need to consciously choose to do it a lot. And if we can consciously choose to detach and surrender in the divine, then I think good things are going to happen. What do I think is going to happen here? Well, um, Aquarius, as I said, is solutions oriented. It is connected with the divine and it is squaring the Taurus influence, which is about stable and secure. Um, ways of moving forward, moving forward with the South Node and Scorpio, getting what we want, you know, getting things that are going to be happy for us as we move forward and even rearranging, the rearranging our current situations. So what that means to me to continue bringing it together is that we realize that um, something is not working out entirely 100% in our situations because either bad experiences happened or we're just anxious and nervous about it here and what's going on um, and that we need to detach and surrender from it but detaching and surrendering is like a really hard thing to do because we still have so many attachments and desires and frustrations and we're fearful and anxious about the outcome of this stuff here that's hard and because of that we need to choose to detach a lot a lot more than we want to or feels comfortable or feels natural and get in touch with the divine and if we can do that then I think we're going to get some good insights perhaps suddenly and unexpectedly because that's the nature of both Uranus and Aquarius, where we may get some good insights, perhaps suddenly and unexpectedly from, um, from the divine, you know, from our intuition, from a higher power about our situations and how to either start them if you haven't already, which a lot of you should have already done stuff by now here, or if not, especially with this being a, the sun being in a skip step as well. Um, here or to um, fix, fix anything that's gone wrong and course correct it here and get it back on track in a much, much better way. Because I do believe whatever a lot of you have recently initiated or want to initiate is meant to work out. The universe, God, spirit, the divine, if it's on your heart right now, I think God wants it to work here and, and weirdly wants it to succeed. So we're going to get some kind of solution here about how to fix these things and get them right back on track or get them going 
going in a much better way and now that we're not sabotaging the situation here and letting the divine step in, okay? But there's another thought that I want to add on top of that too, which is now making this interpretation a lot more complex. But even though I think that we are getting some kind of solution from the divine unexpectedly, if we can detach enough, I still think that there is going to linger some anxiety with the Saturn influence around the solution and what the divine is telling us here. And I think there's still going to linger some kind of anxiety around the solution that the divine is telling us because I don't think it's going to make perfect, like I don't think I don't think it's going to be a super practical plan. I don't think it's going to be maybe super practical. I don't think it's going to satisfy our pride and ego here. I also don't think it's going to be as, as strategic as we might like here because the Aquarius, right, that the the, uh, the full moon is quincunxing Mercury and Virgo, which likes perfection. It's going to be more of a general idea. I think it's going to be more of a general idea of how to solve the situation that might be a little bit hard. And because the solution that we're going to get to fix our situation, which is totally fixable, which God in the universe wants to work out and may come suddenly and unexpectedly is good, but not per perfect, not strategic, not super detail oriented plan for plan. I think the next piece of advice that I want to give you is that you just need to go with it. You just need to go with so stop trying to make a detailed plan and just go with the general idea of how to fix your situation because that's what detaching and surrendering is all about detaching and surrendering is not having is not about having a five-step solution a 10-step solution detaching and surrendering to the divine is trusting that whatever the divine told you the divine is going to take care of whatever the divine wants to work out and that you don't need to know it the details in advance because the divine's going to do it in the way the divine wants to do it here um, and to uh, kind of take a, a leap of faith, a leap of faith here in order to make that happen. Okay. And uh, that's it. I think that's, oh, oh, and maybe I should also note too. And, yeah. And once we take the leap of faith, I think some good things are going to start to occur um, here after that point, because Venus uh, entered Leo right before this full moon in Aquarius, which is a very good sign. Venus is about ease, beauty. Leo is about courage, strength, renewed hope, happiness here. In addition to that, um, Mercury is going to trine Uranus. There are a lot of good things. Sun, trine, Jupiter are going to go on. So once we get the insights from the divine and stop trying to make it be perfect and just trust it and act on the solutions to fix our situation, whatever the divine is telling us, I think it's going to turn out quite well in very positive ways, maybe even suddenly and unexpectedly in very good ways here that are going to make you very happy and give you renewed courage, strength, and hope for yourself and your situations. All right, and uh, that's it. Because that's it, I'm now just going to repeat those things one more time without the astrological jargon so that I can give you a better sense of what is going on here. So let me do that now. Okay, what I think is going on... Um, uh, at this full moon in Aquarius is that we are really trying to surrender and detach here um, from our situations and from whatever we have recently been trying to initiate in our lives with relationships, money, et cetera, et cetera, in order to take it to the next level because it either hasn't been working out entirely in the way we might like or there's just been a lot of fear and anxiety kind of getting in the way of this thing here. And um, that's a good thing. I think we should detach and surrender. But even though it's a good thing, we're just having difficulty doing it fully here um, because we're still attached clearly to our situations and very frustrated and anxious and nervous about them and fearful and upset about how they're going to turn out because we don't know how they're going to turn out yet, which I think is um, a bit hard. And because we know we need to detach and reset and tune into the divine, but we really can't do it because there's so much nervousness and anxiety. We need to consciously choose to do it. Put mind over matter and consciously choose to detach, to rest, and to surrender even more than we want to, or even more than we feel is comfortable, or even more than we feel is necessary at this time. And if we can do that here, then I think that's going to help. That's going to help us finally connect with the divine, feel at ease, and get some solutions that we need about how to start our situations. If you haven't started them, which have already or to correct them or to correct them in some kind of way and get them back on track which is great but even though we're going to get some solutions here about how to course correct and get these things back on track um as we move throughout this full moon i think we're still going to feel a little miffed about these solutions because they're not going to be super finite structured plans here with with 
five steps on how to fix are going to be more general ideas here that I think is going to still make us a little bit worried. And because the solutions the divine is giving us are not step by step plans, but more general ideas, what needs to happen is we need to just accept that a general idea is totally fine and that we don't have to have a step by step plan and that the divine is going to take care of us if the divine is giving us the solution. And if we can trust in the divine solution that we're getting from detaching and just have faith that the divine is going to help us and then initiate some kind of solution to our situations it's actually going to work here. It's actually going to work and suddenly an unexpected, positive, good ways here to get your situation back on track because I do really believe that there's something that's going on right now in a lot of your lives that like God, universe, the divine really for some weird reason like wants to work out for you, like really wants it to come together here for you in order to move forward. Okay. And uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Anything else that I want to add? I don't know. To be honest with you, I am just not feeling super talkative today. <laughs> just living that 12th house sun life. I don't always feel talkative a lot of days. So I don't know if there's like more I really want to say other than other to just, I just want to keep it simple. And I think the, the only other thing that I really want to say is that we do need to initiate something in our lives, especially since the new moon in Leo two weeks ago here, that is going to be better for us and to do it in a slow, stable and secure way because it is meant to work out. Um, but even though it's meant to work out, it just for some weird reason hasn't been working out entirely in the way we might like over the course of the past two weeks. And, I th and, and for some of you, it's unexpected events. But I think for a lot of you, it's just like your own fear and anxiety, to be honest, getting in the way. And this full moon is really all about the divine saying, quit, quit your anxiety quit being afraid. You know, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. I got this. I got your back. Like, I want these situations to work out. I'm going to help you get out of your own way. Like, just get out of your own way and like, let me work through you and let me work through you to maneuver these situations. Because if you get out of your own way and let the divine work through you, like, which is really what's meant to happen here, you're going to be fine. And you're going to realize that whatever you initiated two weeks ago is still beautiful, is still beautiful, is still beautiful. You know, once you stop your fear and self sabotage getting in the way, and is meant to work out and, uh, or you're going to start to initiate something you should have initiated and realize you're fine, you're just fine, and things are going to come together. Okay. So I don't know, I think that's what I have to say. Okay, because that's it, I'm now going to look at your inside degrees here. I like to look at your inside degrees just to give you another perspective on the astrology like other than my own. Um, and so I want to do that. The inside degrees were not written by me. They were written by someone else um, named Elias Lonsdale, who I believe channeled the meanings of each of the degrees from spirit. But I, I really I really respect, you know, his whatever he is creative work here, because I find that it really resonates with me in a lot of the situations. So we're going to read this. Um, um, we're going to start, the, the full moon is at Aquarius 19 here. I actually like 20 better, uh, but I'm going to start with 19 first. So we're going to do that. Aquarius 19 says this, the indomitable spirit of one who has been at this forever and will still be on collective karmic alert to the very end. Purpose hugely takes precedence. Whatever is changing and whatever is staying the same are two forces you track with and report back to cosmic center upon. Okay, what this to me actually indicates is the week or two prior to this this full moon really that's how i feel about this and i feel like in the week or two prior to this full moon in aquarius we have most of us either have or i really do believe should have initiated something with relationships and money that is going to be better for us here and i think that since initiating that thing two weeks ago i think we've been you know on high alert about it you know i think we've been uh, really aware especially since mercury entered virgo really aware here of like how it's working is it working is it not working how and when and kind of been really detailed detail oriented maybe uh, of like what's coming together and what's not and um like highly alert of our situations and our emotions and all of that okay 
And I should note, I think that we've been that way for good for good reason. Because if you read the end of the inside degree, it says this, the reason why we're on high alert is so that all concern can synchronize with the greater ways and be released from anything and anything that runs counter to the bright promise of earth and evolution. So what Aquarius 19 means to me is that recently, the new moon in Leo, we have or needed to initiate some kind of thing to improve our lives here, because I do think God wants that to work. Um, and since we've initiated something two weeks ago or planned to initiate something, I think we've been on high alert with a keen eye observing the details of our situation to see what, what out of our action is coming together and what isn't coming together here and in what way. And I think we've been doing it with good intentions here to really try to get all these disparate pieces of our lives together into some whole that we can feel like we can move on with. Hey, but even though, like, even though I think that's what we've been doing over the course of the past two weeks, I need to note, like, I just don't think that that, to be honest, was the most helpful way to handle the situation because we really had some negative alignments in the astrology over the course of the past week in particular, which I didn't talk about in my new moon and Leo horoscope because I wasn't going on then, but which I did talk about my website where I do tons more videos for the first quarter moon in Scorpio here. Um, and I don't think that us having this much attention to detail was super helpful. Um, and because we were so attuned to detail here with really pure intentions to try to fix our situations and get it right back on track here. Um, and, and, and because <coughs> something with our situations, <clears throat> I think have either felt stuck or stagnating or not coming together. I think we got very frustrated here with some things and um, I don't think it was that great. And I think that's why we now need this full moon to surrender so that we're not being so detail oriented and so nitpicky about our progress here. And I think that's why I like Aquarius 20 much better. And Aquarius 20, Aquarius, especially because these planets are in motion, right? Like the moon the full moon is going to happen for like a few hours, like like two or three hours, and then the moon's going to move on to 20 degrees. So I like, I like this. It says inward intention counts for everything. Outward results do not matter. So to again, to put 19 and 20 together, I think what happened is that we initiated some actions two weeks ago at the new moon in Leo. I think they started to work out, but then, but then, ran on hard times. And I think that was frustrating to us because I think that we were trying to keep track of the details of what was working and what wasn't with pure intention so that we can fix it. But I think the more that we tried to analyze what we were doing in our situations, and if we were winning or losing or how things were happening here, I think we just started to get more frustrated and spin out of control and a little tizzy. And what this full moon is about is about us stopping keeping track of these outward results of, of this, our wins and losses of our things working of our things not, and to just surrender to the process and to realize that really outward results don't matter, at least not right now. Okay, what matters is the inward intention for what you're doing. And if your heart and if your soul and if your mind and if your emotions are in the right place here, which is connected to the divine and connected to spirit, because if your inward in emotions and intentions are in the right place and the outward results are going to come together, maybe not right now. I think whatever we're initiating now still needs another three months to complete until, you know, the next solar eclipse in Scorpio and the lunar eclipse in Taurus in November of this year. But if the inward intentions are correct, then the outward results are going to come together later this year in November. Okay. Not only is this full moon in Aquarius really about really trying to tell us, like, stop keeping track of your situation of like what's working and what's not and who's winning and who's lo losing and who's doing what and what's doing. Stop doing that. Because even if it comes from a really pure place, because it's just not working, okay? And let go of the outward and external results and just focus on your inward posture and your inward intention and emotions. But also, I think it's saying to just be present, you know, because the next line of this inside degree says you are dropped into remote places to be a subtle glue, a connecting intelligence just along the inside. 
You know, so I think the full moon is asking saying sometimes all you need to do is just be present in a situation without trying to make it something one way or the other. Because when you're in a situation here and when you're just present in it, it gives more space for the situation to be what it actually needs to be, you know, and for the divine to work through you here in helpful ways. Okay. See, it helps you to stay tuned to the subtle frequencies. You are remarkably absent from the daily rough and tumble of what seems to go on around you. You indwell in otherness and alienness that consciously has no idea what it's doing. But when you are around, yes. But when you are around, other people find that there are blessings, breakthroughs, protections, and odd phenomena adding up to the impression that one is touched by something marvelous and strange. Being an empty vessel for the cosmic um, consciousness. Yeah, just being there. So what this means to me, I guess, to continue bringing it together now that I've read the rest of the inside degree is that not only do is this full moon telling us to stop the tit for tat, stop the, the scorecard of what's working and what's not in your external situation, even though it comes from a good place and it just let go of the outward expectations and just focus on the inward intention. Because if you've got the inward intention, then the outward is going to be fine three months from now, if not right now, here, and to just be present and be an empty vessel, an empty vessel for the spirit and intuition and the divine to work through you. Because if all you do is just surrender and be present and let the divine work through you here, then you're going to find that blessings, breakthroughs, protections, and odd positive phenomena, I think suddenly and unexpectedly are going to occur in good ways to help you move forward and that you don't have to strive and try here, but that they're just going to happen naturally as you move onwards. Okay. And I think that's all that I have to say there. Okay. Your situations are, are going, are going fine, or if they're not going fine, are going to turn out better than you can even imagine, you know, three months from now, if you just keep, if you just stop getting distracted by external appearances and outward manifestations of things and focus more on the inward posture and um and connecting to the divine and just being whatever the divine you know is needs you to be and allow it to work through you okay and i think that's it because of that um i'm now just gonna look at your card it came out earlier while i was shuffling we've got the ace of wands up right here and we've got the Ten of Cups upright. Okay, one of the first thoughts that I get from the Ten of Cups, this is a card in some ways about relationships. Here it typically has, you know, a couple on it and family members here. Um, so I think what I want to say is that some of you have, if some of you have recently had struggles with people in your life, doesn't matter, a friend, a boss, a romantic person or whatever, that I do believe that um, you can totally reconcile, reconcile here with that person um, especially in the days after this full moon, it looks very, very, very good for that. It may not feel like it, like there's a chance, but I'm telling you there is one, even if it doesn't feel or look like it for you to reconcile any arguments here and get it on a much better amicable trajectory here because Aquarius is a sign of being amicable and solving things. And because I think God really does want this stuff to work out here as well. And because I need to know, like, this isn't an eclipse, you know, like, typically when the you have these big breakups and, like, issues, when, when all these things go on that are, like, more permanent, typically that happens more at eclipse season, which which is going to occur at the end of October and into November. So not, not that there can't be, like, breakups and stuff in between then, but usually the bigger, more permanent ones are not at this kind of just, like, little full moon, if you will. So huge message for some of you, like... If you've gotten in an argument or a disagreement with anyone in your life, for a lot of you, it's totally, you're, you're totally going to be able to reconcile, even if it doesn't seem like it now, to either repair that relationship or get it back on track in a different and better way or to just feel better about it in relationships in general. Okay. Um, what else? Yeah. And look at it. We've got the Ace of Wands to me is about beginnings, right? Being an ace. And I want to say beginning in different ways. It gives me kind of like an Aries feel. So especially with like the fire on this card. Whoops. <laughs> um, so.
So another thing that I want to say as well is that not only if you've gotten in any disagreement with a person or something about that, that there there's reconciliations and forgiveness and apologies and compassion totally possible here around this full moon. But that um, I think there need that that if that these relationship reconciliations are probably going to need to be done in a different way or maybe require you to have different behaviors and habits with these people than you have in the past, but that these different behaviors and habits are necessary and should be a relief. They should be something that you might want to do here in order to move them onwards. Okay, not only that, but um, if we want to go another route, the Ten of Cups don't have to be about relationships. They can also just be about emotional fulfillment, you feeling more fulfilled. And I see the Ace of Wands as like passion and excitement and creativity here and ease. So another thing too is that not only at this full moon as a result of you detaching and surrendering to the divine can a lot of you correct a lot of recent negative situations with relationships here to get them back on track in a new different and better way with new different and better behaviors that should feel like a relief but i think also another thing that can happen as a result of this full moon in aquarius is that a lot of you can just start to feel like more content within your life more emotionally fulfilled in a lot of ways with more of that like internal spark i think for life coming back and creativity and and passion and coming back here because you are like kind of weirdly letting go of control to the divine. Okay, so I also want to note that. Another thing that I want to say too is that it might sound like an oxymoron, you know, by us losing ourselves, right, in the divine and surrendering, we're actually going to find more contentment and reconciliation with people and um, creativity and excitement and passion here. But even though it seems like an oxymoron, it doesn't mean it's not true, you know, like it doesn't mean it's not true. I think it can definitely happen perhaps other cultures other than like well the western might be more open to this because it does remind me of like a Taoist principle of like doing by not doing you know and so i think that that's another thing that i want to say here like release is like at this full moon if you surrender and detach and let the divine kind of take over not only and work through you not only you're going to find relationships work out, but you're also just going to find things get easier for you to do in your life and for you to feel more fulfilled and more creative and more excited to move things forward, which I think is going to be very nice here. Um, and I think that's all that I have to say uh, here is that good things want to come. You just got to get out of your own way and surrender and detach and let the divine work through you and help you. Because if you do, everything's going to be just fine, especially in November as we move forward. At the next eclipse season so that is your daily uh, not your daily i do so many horoscope videos <laughs> um and all these places horoscope.com i do i do a, one every day i also do a bunch on my website you know every other you know every i also do a video every day on my website <laughs> so it's hard to keep them keep track of all the the salutations <laughs> and things that i have to say but that's all i've got now thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel like it on youtube share it with your friends here and i will talk to to you on the next video.